Hi, I'm Mike Bombs. I teach uh, biology at SUNY New Paltz. And uh, we live in an environment right now that where facts really don't matter. And uh, truth is always obfuscated. It's always like changed more or less. And we're seeing it now. One of the things that I firmly believe is that we're all entitled to our opinions, but we're not entitled to our own facts. Facts is truth going on. There's two things I want to talk about. And the first one is about antibiotics in uh, meat. And uh, what happened was, that before we start, there's a thing called CAFO. CAFO is a concentrated animal feeding operation. And the last six months of the lives of cattle, pigs, goats, chickens, they live in these huge cities confined to a small area. And what they do is they start eating basically corn, because corn fattens them up. And the way we sell products, meat products, is by weight. And because the fact that these animals are standing in a crowded area in their own feces, their own manure, the, the uh, hides are caked over and so forth, that if one animal gets sick, they all can get sick. So what they have done is they have started introducing what's called subtherapeutic antibiotics to these animals to prevent if one gets sick, they all, the others don't get sick in that aspect of it. And what, what they noticed, which is really amazing, is they noticed the fact that these animals started to gain weight with these antibiotics. And they started to gain something like around 3% to 5% of weight. And this was a big boon to the corporation, to the big corporate farms, because now you can feed them less, giving them antibiotics, and, you, and all this money that you save comes from profit. Alexander Fleming was the first person that uh, created antibiotics. And what an antibiotic is, it's actually a mold that produces a chemical, and this chemical kills bacteria. And because of, uh, because of Fleming's uh, contribution, his, his discovery, what happened was people started getting better. World War I, for example, many people died, many soldiers died because of wounds that were not life-threatening, but they became infected and they didn't know how to treat it. When World War II came and these same wounds were evident, they now gave them penicillin. And penicillin cured them from antibiotics. And so he warned us that you cannot give penicillin all the time to, uh, to, uh, to, for bacteria, because bacteria itself will become immune to it, resistant to it, and the, and the penicillin becomes ineffective. So he warned us that back in the 1940s when he was given the Nobel Prize for chemistry because of this. When we ask evolutionists right now to make a scenario, what is it that will eventually cause the extinction of human beings, they all say the same thing. It's bacteria, bacteria. What's happening right now is that by, uh, by, giving, back, by giving antibiotics back to uh, farm animals, we're ensuring and we're hastening this result. Pharmaceuticals with, uh, do not make a lot of money on antibiotics. And the reason being they don't make a lot of money because when they prescribe antibiotics to us, the protocol says 10 days max. So these aren't, so they don't make a lot of money here as opposed to things like Lipitor or Crestar, which has taken your whole life all the way through. Now giving these antibiotics to these farm animals, they are now making a tremendous amount of money. And what's happening is that the bacteria that they're intended to uh, kill now become resistant to it. Why resistant? Because these antibiotics will kill about 99.99% of the bacteria that's present, but that remaining fraction is now immune to it. They're now resistant to it, and they spread that resistance to other bacteria. And so what happens now is that the uh, antibiotic effectively is not effective anymore in that sense. When we eat the meat of animals that were given this antibiotic, we eat the residue of this thing, and sure enough, the bacteria in our body become also becomes resistant to it. When a common urinary tract infection, which is treated by penicillin, becomes ineffective, you put the danger, you put the, a person in danger of their life. Example of this is that I have a friend that works in Washington, D.C., in the Department of Health, and he has a map of the U.S. that has, uh, that has these red dots all over the country, and this is the prevalence of gonorrhea. And the thing is, though, what's happening right now is that the uh, Mid-Hudson Valley has one of the highest incidents of gonorrhea. Now, that, that doesn't mean the reason why we have this incident is because we're more promiscuous than anywhere else in the world, is that the common uh, antibody to this thing is given penicillin. The bacteria have become immune to it. So when they become immune to it, that uh, treatment is no longer worthwhile. And now you're putting people in danger. Science tells us that we do not give people antibiotics to prevent them from getting sick later in life or later. For example, you guys live in close quarter on campus here, and yet you're not given antibiotics to prevent any kind of disease. 
These animals are given antibiotics, and again, the purpose was to, to maintain their health. What they found out is this growth, which, which is a tremendous, and it created more profit for them, they started to give antibiotics. And we started seeing the rise of these bacteria that are now resistant to penicillin, to any kind of antibiotic. And what we're doing now, we're endangering everybody. 90,000 Americans die from infections that they get in hospitals that there's no cure for, where the cures were antibiotics, but they're no longer uh, effective anymore. We had just had a recently in Arizona, I believe, a woman, a 30-year-old woman coming in with UTI, urinary tract infection, who died because the E. coli traveled up from her uh, urinary tract system into her kidneys and into her blood, and she became very septic, and she died of blood poisoning unheard of. This is unheard of. And so right now when you have the American Medical Association, the American Society of Health Practitioners, the American uh, Veterinary Association condemn this practice of these CAFOs giving, back to, giving uh, antibiotics to these animals, yet it's being done. The FDA, which should be monitoring this whole thing, is not monitoring it. And what they do is when they give laws, regulations to curb the use of antibiotics, there's no teeth behind it. There's no teeth behind it. And because there's no teeth behind it, they continue doing it, doing so in a sense. And what this does is it's endangering all of us. The science tells us that we don't give antibiotics on a continual basis because the bacteria becomes resistant and then becomes ineffectual. And yet, we are doing this right now. So this is where, where you know, where fact is not so important as making money where it doesn't really matter what it is. In Europe, also the same practice of giving antibiotics to farm animals. But in 2006, the European Union then outlawed the use of antibiotics because the concern of the European Union is, is the health and welfare of its people, not its corporation. And they started to, to uh, you know, discourage and regulate the use of antibiotics. Danish farmers protested that, saying that if you don't let us use antibiotics, we got to feed them more, and if we have to feed them more, we're going to have to raise the price of meat. The response was, go ahead and do that. And so they stopped giving antibiotics to animals, and they raised their price of meat to five cents a pound more. What they found out was the animals became much more healthier, and the health of the Europeans also improved. So we see where the science is ignored here in Europe. They embrace it. This is a major concern here. The other major concern that I'm concerned with is genetically modified organisms, genetically modified food. And what they do basically is they take a gene from a different animal, different living species, and put it to another living species in hope of, of gaining whatever that uh, gene did in that first animal or living thing, hope to do that in the second one. What they found out is as follows. There is a bacteria called Bacillus thuringiensis. And what the Bacillus thuringiensis does produces a toxin that kills caterpillars. Now, one of the biggest uh, killers of corn are these caterpillars, the European boar weevil caterpillar. So what, what they have found out is they, they actually isolated that gene, that gene in this bacteria that produces the, uh, this toxin, took that gene and they spliced it into corn. So now corn, which is now called BT corn, Bacillus thuringiensis corn, can now make that, back, make that toxin 24 hours a day seven days a week. And what's happening basically is that, uh, like Monsanto, who has perfected this thing, said that with this corn, with, not, with this corn being now BT corn, there was less spraying to be done. And the answer is yes, there is less spraying of pesticides being done, but this corn is making pesticides all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So what it is, it's semantics, more or less, where they try to change the uh, story from less spraying to more pesticides being used. And what happens basically is, is that, again, this is dangerous. And when we, ask, when we ask about, for example, should there be any kind of testing being done on this thing, they say no, there's no need for testing. And the reason why there's no need for testing is that when they take conventional corn that doesn't have the BT in it, and they take BT corn, and they do what's called a mass spec reading on it, and they get these tracings, and they put them together, uh, overlap each other, and it's exactly the same thing. And because of, this is known as substantial equivalent, and therefore BT corn and, and regular corn have the same tracings, and since we don't test conventional corn for, uh, for safety, therefore the BT corn doesn't have to be tested for safety. As a scientist, that somewhat makes a little sense. 
Then on the other hand, Monsanto then goes to the U.S. Patent Office and asks for a patent on this, PT, on this BT corn, saying that this BT corn is different. It's different than uh, the conventional corn, therefore we should get a patent on it. And lo and behold, holding both points of view, they don't have to test it, and they got a patent for it. This makes no sense any which way. Any kind of uh, logic, any kind of, uh, any kind of science at all. This is not the way science works in a sense. And this is what goes on. That, in my opinion, and my, what I feel here, that it doesn't matter what the facts are, it doesn't matter what the truth is, as long as there's profit motive behind it, and that's the, that's the uh, answer to what they do. And that's wrong.